Okay, it is time for a June farm update. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you here, it is very early, middle of June, 2020. So we wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on on the farm here as we go into the hottest part of the year. So we're gonna go ahead and start here right at the front. A couple things, obviously from a fencing standpoint, Lori and I decided to go ahead and cut down some of our wooden fencing here, our rail fencing, to make it even with the front of the property. I was really bothering Lori having the longer posts leading into <laughs> those four foot tall posts that are metal. So we cut those down. What's gonna be nice, it actually does give a clearer view of the farm, which is behind me. So let's go ahead and go inside, take a look at a few other things. Okay, so first tree, of course, would be our honey mandarin. So you can see we've already had 110 plus degree days here this month. So all of the trees are kind of in survival mode. A couple of them are putting on some new growth, which you'll see, but this one definitely right now just trying to survive. Now it did put on, it set a lot of fruit. So we actually kept a couple of small fruit. Let's take a peek at those real quick. So you'll see as Lori slides in a little bit closer, we only kept a couple, but you can see it's got a couple of small little mandarins on here. So kept them few and far between because obviously it's newly transplanted. However, this tree is a few years old. So in the end, it can definitely hold a couple pieces of fruit. So what we need to do, if Lori wants to spin around that way, let's go ahead, take, go ahead and take a look at the chicken coop and run area. It's looking really, really good. Okay, so you can see we're right here at the front of the coop and run area. We've got our chickens in the back waking up this morning, but we also have our kumquats behind me here. You can see they're actually doing really, really well. Now the Nagami here on the end, we actually had an issue with the irrigation when we first put it in. And I think it went three to four weeks or so without any water. So it had some leaf drop on the backside, which has come in nice and heavy. And all four of these have actually flowered and tried to set fruit. In fact, I'm gonna have Lori slide in. Let's take a look at the Centennial cause it's covered with little fruit. So as Lori slides in, you'll see we've got several small pieces of fruit here. A couple more there, another one down here. And as you look in, they're just kind of everywhere. So, this tree obviously was in a pot for its first couple years of life, but now that it's in the ground, it's just doing really well, it just exploded. And then of course, next to it, we have the Miwa. The Miwa actually is <laughs> in the middle of flowering again. So it has flowers on it, kind of hard to make out, but got some flowers here. Back in there. And then as we continue to go along, You'll see we have the Fukushu here flowering again. This is the second round of flowering that this tree's put on. Just covered with flowers. Might be hard to make out on camera, but you can see it's just doing really well. Really liking its home. And then the Nagami on this side as well. Doing good as well. So now obviously that one with a little bit of shock, he's just putting on foliage, which is great. Actually growing really well as well. So now what we need to do is we need to slide around here. Let's go take a look at these everbearing mulberries. So you can see here, we have our everbearing mulberries. These trees are doing really, really well. You can see this one here is probably a good four feet tall or so and they're starting to bush in really well. Now these had an amazing fruit set. We actually got a lot of small fruit off of these trees. Now, of course, they're done with their fruiting and they're ready to uh, put on some growth. And that's really what we want from them because this is what's gonna shade our coop and run. Now, just behind me here, you'll see we did a video on our automatic water for our chickens. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so you can see this has actually been performing really well. The cups have been doing great. And the only thing we need to do is come back here and paint this fitting, but we did get some paint on there. Overall, the system's working great. The girls have had it for about a week or so. Let's take a look inside real quick, see how much water they've used this week. So you can see in there, Pretty good amount actually. I'm guessing out of this 50 gallon water barrel, probably a good five to six gallons. 
maybe a little bit more. But what's great for Lori and I is we haven't had to do a thing. <laughs> They've had plenty of water and we haven't had to do much to make sure that they're well watered. What I want to do now, let's walk around to the other side. We've got a few trees and pots and let's go take a look at our tractor chickens. So here we are, I'm looking at the Eastern sun. You can see we have our kind of our leftover nursery as far as trees are concerned. Now, the first thing here would be our potted apple tree. This is a golden dorset apple tree. And we're actually gonna be doing a video, hopefully if they survive, on our first harvest off of this tree. Either way, we have several different things in here that we weren't able to get into the ground and they're actually all doing really, really well. In fact, one of them we haven't talked about, I want you guys to take a look at. So here's something that we haven't talked about much at all. So if you guys have followed us for a while, you know that we lost our only Moringa tree on the old farm. It was a real bummer. We have learned some lessons since then, but one of the things that we actually overwintered this year was a Moringa tree. And this one we did not protect. However, it was in the tractors with the rest of our plant starts. And with that additional kind of warmth with all of the trees around it, it actually survived our winter. And it's coming back nice and strong. So we have some ideas as far as what we can do with Moringa trees here on the farm. One of those will definitely be fodder for our livestock. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll figure that one out. But if Lori wants to look that way, you'll see we have our tractor chickens. So these are all of our pullets. These are our new laying hen flock and they're doing really well in these tractors. Now our plan, as Lori kind of scans back towards the house, hopefully you can pick it up with this morning sun, but this will eventually be our pasture for our pastured chickens. We raise broiler chickens and our egg layers and we wanna make sure we have green grass for them to consume, at least during the winter time when we can keep it green. And what these chickens are doing is helping us to prepare the soil by putting manure down on the ground. So they're doing well in these tractors. They're surviving the heat just fine, which is good to see. But overall, I think that we're well on our way to getting this pasture established. Well, kinda. Now what I'm gonna do is Lori wants to pan that way. That's where we're headed. That would be our Western Orchard. This is where we have all of our stone fruit and a couple of nut trees, which are also kind of stone fruit. Either way, what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through a couple of the areas. I'm gonna stop talking so you can actually just kind of walk through with us as we look at the orchard. But you can see we've got some amazing growth in some trees and a handful of trees, maybe not quite so much. Overall, these peach trees are doing great. We have our Florida Prince peach trees here, which, which, which were the first ones in the ground. So they've been in the ground now for, oh, I guess a couple months. And then we have these other set of eight peach trees that are all about a month younger. Now, for the most part, they're doing really, really well, but I've got one here that's not doing quite so well. Now, it's interesting to see having this many trees here all together how different each one of them grows. They really are quite unique. Now, this particular one had some issues with some leaf curl and it didn't seem to be doing much of anything. But recently it's been getting some new growth just here over the last week, getting a lot of new growth here in the middle of the tree and also out at the tips. So we're finding that for the most part, both rootstocks, we have two different rootstocks in here, both rootstocks are doing well, so it doesn't seem to be that. I think it's just the tree, and there are times when trees just don't do as well as others. Each one of them is unique, just like we are. You know, we have a lot of folks that ask us, hey, my tree's doing this, my tree's doing this, why do you think it's doing this? And you know, and the reality is there are things you can do, but at the same time, we're treating this tree no differently from any of the other trees. We've got three more of this exact same variety. In fact, I'm gonna show you another one that's the exact same variety, same age, totally different as far as how it's doing. But sometimes the trees just won't do as well. Either way, it looks like it's surviving, so we'll see how it does for the summer. 
So as I was saying, this is the exact same type of tree. So same variety, it's an early amber peach and look how fantastic it's doing. Establishing a nice straight trunk down here. The graft point is healing over fantastic. Lots of lots and lots of strong, strong growth. And you can see just bushing out great up here towards the top. And I'm guessing this thing's a good four feet tall, maybe a little bit more. Overall, this one doing just fantastic, which is great to see. Okay, so one of the biggest challenges, <laughs> we've had several, but one of the biggest challenges we've faced here on this farm, which is totally unique, at least for us so far, has been jackrabbits. These rabbits are just massive. I don't, I don't know if you've all seen jackrabbits jack before, but you know, you have your little cottontails and they're, they're little guys, they're this big. When they stand up on their hind legs, they're about this tall. Well, jackrabbits are at least twice that big maybe three times. I mean, they're long. They're about three feet long. Either way, we found very quickly that we had some trees. We walked out one morning and trees were just being consumed. You can see this guy here, this one got chomped in half. So it was above this cage, got chomped in half, started to grow back. And then as Lori slides in, you're going to see ever since then, it's got some new growth it's actually trying to put on now, but then we've had some type of bug damage that's come back and just started attacking this tree. So <laughs> whether or not this one's actually gonna survive, I honestly have no idea. I think one of the challenges with getting these trees in the ground so late is they didn't have a lot of time to put on a lot of growth. And then of course we had those jackrabbits coming in, chomped them in half, and so they're really stressed out and struggling. Either way, it's got some new growth on, so we'll see whether or not it survives. We talked about this tree before. Before This is our nectarine plum hybrid. And this tree was really struggling the last time we were doing an update for you guys, so about a month ago. Since then, it has just taken off. So again, like we were talking about earlier, you know, you look at a tree that may be struggling, it's having some issues, and you know, sometimes they just push through. And this one has come back really strong. So excited to see this. This is our Katie apricot. So this tree, we found out that the jackrabbits, they don't eat peaches, but they really love these hybrids and they love the apricot trees for whatever reason. So this particular tree is our Katie apricot and it was eaten down to about here. And we did some things with some bird netting and that kind of thing, thinking that we were dealing with bunnies. And then we found out quickly it was something else because it ate through the bird netting and then ate down into, into the tree itself. So this one was actually attacked twice by jackrabbits until we finally got it caged in better. And then it really bounced back strongly. So it's converse to what we saw with that other hybrid where it got eaten down to a nub and then couldn't survive when it tried, well, had struggled surviving to bounce back. This one has come back really strong. So it's doing great. If Lori pans that way, you'll see the same thing with a couple of our apricot hybrids over on that side and those have bounced back really strongly as well. Last stop on the west side of the orchard would be our burgundy plum. So this tree, just like the other trees, was eaten <laughs> down about in half by our jackrabbits and has since come back really strong. This, I think, is our tallest tree. At least it's pretty darn close. And this one's uh, pushing six feet tall if it straightens out. So eventually we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do as far as uh, cages around these guys. 
maybe I can find one trunk <laughs> or something and we can kind of deal do something else with this but it looks great and then as Lori pans back this way you'll see we got some open space still we won't get to until at least this fall the almond trees in the back are doing fantastic but I wanted to give you guys a shot as we head to the other side of the farm we're gonna make one quick stop right here at our vineyard garden So we did a series where we talked about our vineyard garden. You can see overall beds are doing fantastic. We've got some issues with some gophers trying to dig underneath the beds. But one of the things that I wanted to show you was this arbor. So we had this pergola type arbor that was built for us and I'm gonna link his Instagram. I actually work with him. So Roger built these for us and he is a very good fabricator when it comes to metalwork. And he designed these and built these for us. Us. So they look fantastic. Really looking forward to growing some grapes up and over these things. But uh, nice and tall. I forget. I think we did, I think it was seven or eight feet tall. They're about three feet deep. And then however wide this was, I don't remember that either. But uh, walking into the vineyard garden from this side with a grapevine growing across the top. Boy, I'm looking forward to that. on the eastern orchard so this one not quite as full but you can see the fig trees are just taking off one of the things about fig trees here in Arizona is once we get up into that 100 degree mark and above these trees really respond and they respond with just um, just an explosion of growth so you can see they're doing great now we did add the cages <laughs> it did a little different something different with these trees as far as caging they're way too aggressive with their growth to try to keep them confined in those smaller um, rabbit protective cages so we've taken larger cages and put them here just to make sure that they were not disturbed as they start to put on their growth and several of these tr trees have fruit on them <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and leave the fruit on there, see if maybe we'll have a harvest video here for you guys, maybe this summer. to get one shot of all of our pear trees we have multiple varieties of pear trees now pears this time of year they really start to struggle a lot as Lori pans over you'll kind of get an idea they do grow nice and tall and that vertical growth is common for pears we have come back and we've painted more of the trunks and they're really starting to establish that central leader now obviously the challenge will be the next couple of months for them we got them in the ground very late so we'll see whether or not they survive so far though they're all doing pretty good okay so now what we need to do is we need to head up to the front but as we get this shot obviously you can see the biggest change for us here would be the outbuilding so love having that additional space it's doing fantastic of course our tractor is in there as well <laughs> which is a huge help here on the farm but what i want to make sure we do before we leave is i want to make sure we look at, our, at those mulberry trees so let's head on up there these mulberry trees are doing amazing so we actually got a great harvest off of these so these first four here would be our shangri-la mulberries you can see these are four foot cages this one here not growing quite as strongly as the rest of them down here but you can see they're already growing up above these four foot cages so these guys are putting on some amazing growth one of the things about these trees much like the pear trees is during the summer they have a tendency to slow down as far as growth and as we get up into those 105 110 115 degree days they do slow down just a little bit but for the most part these are doing great the contorted mulberries up front also growing really strongly so those are doing fantastic let's go over and take a look at the berry beds and our soil creation I want to show you that
well, we actually did a video where we planted some sweet potatoes and as you can see there aren't any sweet potatoes here <laughs> so pretty much what i thought was probably going to happen they did not survive they tried but they they didn't do much we still have the growth from the palm those little palm seeds that were in here they're still coming up so we still have some root growth that's going down into here now i do know that the soil is being created because i've dug my hand down into here now we're keeping it nice and wet so it actually is nice and moist and it's the reason why we're still getting the growth from these little palm trees so you can see that's still growing really really well which is fine and you can see lots of different growth down in here again more of those palm seeds sprouting which again is just amazing to see it's in nothing but wood chips but nice and moist and already starting to get some soil creation here which is fantastic to see so overall that's coming along really well we do have a few more sweet potatoes that we've got in pots we're still going to try to get a couple sweet potatoes in here if we can obviously we're way too late so the sun in the heat is really going to be a challenge as far as that's concerned but we do have an acorn squash that's so far surviving let's peek at that So for the most part, that'll kind of give you a wrap up or an update as far as where we stand today on the farm. Now we've still got a lot we're going to try to get accomplished this summer before we get into fall. We've got a tremendous amount of growth and life that we're going to be bringing onto the farm this fall. At least that's the plan. We'll cover that as we go through the coming months and into the fall. One of the things we've got coming up immediately though would be additional fencing. So with the addition of the outbuilding, we have this temporary fence that we put up here barbed wire just to keep the cattle out now we need to come through and actually extend fencing so we're actually going to do a couple different types of fencing up here um, one of those will be another cedar plank fence so we'll do a video on that and we already have some supplies we stopped off at tractor supply yesterday and got some fence posts so we're going to be able to try out that auger bit that we got for the tractor get some holes dug and get some fencing in we've got that going on we've got fencing everywhere really fencing is our biggest thing right now because we've got a lot of livestock that's going to be coming onto the farm this fall and some larger livestock to be specific okay so want to make sure we gave you guys an update now we're doing these for ourselves as well it's just cool to see all of it coming together and we get kind of that step-by-step -step process that we're going through just reminds us of where we were you know a few years from now once all these things were grown up and we do changes and we make changes so hope you guys like this type of episode if you do let me know down on the comment section down below just wanted to give you one more shot of how the farm looks here today because <laughs> obviously there's still a lot more to go so just want to thank you for joining us today if you haven't done so already subscribe to the channel questions or comments leave those in the comment section down below instagram and facebook we post content there you won't see here on the youtube channel and our amazon shop i'll leave a link down in the description that's a free painless way to help support the channel if you start with that link it doesn't matter what you buy you help to support us here so just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you if we can farm on the edge of nowhere so can you but overall i think the I think, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. I had a freaking ant up on me. <laughs> Man, I really need those new sunglasses. This is bright. <laughs>